joining us online by the internet watching our services thanks to them for joining with us but uh, we're going to start with um, a hymn um, sung not by us <laughs> or singing not by us this morning we're going to be singing Christ Alone by the EMW ABBA conference so um, shall we stand as we uh, sing this in our hearts together in Christ alone Um, come to the Lord in prayer together shall we let's pray our God this morning we thank you for the psalmist when he says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried 
into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still, God says to his people. Be still and know that I am God. And our Heavenly Father, we come this morning and we thank you, Lord, indeed, that you are God. You are in control. You are the one, Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. You are the almighty God, the all-powerful one, the all-knowing uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we come this morning in your name, in this time, together, Lord, in this service that we hold in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, as we come together this morning, a company of your believing people. We ask you, Lord, for your grace to come among us in this time together. And uh, maybe you be speaking to hearts and minds, Lord, in this time. We thank you, Lord, for the gospel. Lord, it is the message that the world needs to hear. It is the message, the only message, Lord, that you have given that uh, when believed will change hearts, will turn wicked hearts to believing hearts, will change us, Lord, on our course in life from the road to hell to the road to heaven, from, from death to life, Lord. This is the message that you've given to your church. This is the message that Jesus Christ came to bring. And we thank you, Lord, in Christ alone, our hope is found. We thank you, Lord, it's only in Christ that our sins are washed away, Lord, that our guilt has been dealt with, Lord. That, Lord, it's only in him that we can be saved. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way in which sinful man can come to God. There is no re other religion, so to speak, in which man can come to God. There's only one way. And uh, we thank you, Lord, that our Saviour made it so clear to, to us, Lord, in his word, to those who listen to him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. We thank you, Lord, for these great truths of your word. We thank you, Lord, that um, we are called as Christians to preach the gospel by every means, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for every tract that's been given out, Lord, every word spoken, Lord, to somebody this week, every sermon preached, Lord, every sermon read and heard. Lord, we thank you for those who serve you in this way, Lord, uh, who serve you in missionary work. Lord, bless the work of missions today across our world. And uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, your kingdom will come through the preaching proclaiming of, of the of the gospel of the word of god lord we thank you lord that people will be saved will come to know jesus through the preaching of the gospel and we rejoice lord and we believe that even in this days of crisis there are people who come to know the lord jesus christ through these events lord through this these difficulties that we face as a nation and as a world lord we praise you you're the God who's working and is always working. Lord, we pray for those among our, our fellowship, Lord, who's struggling through, through, through this time. We, we think of those, Lord, particularly laid low through sickness and illness. And uh, we, we do pray uh, for those, Lord, this morning. We think of Bill in hospital, Lord, facing serious surgery this week. And uh, we do pray for him. Lord, that uh, you'll become very real to him uh, in his hospital bed, Lord. You, you will show him, Lord, that you are Lord and Saviour. We, we, we think of others, Lord, who uh, are, have lost their jobs through this virus, Lord, who lost their employment, who are looking for work, are now better. We do remember them this morning. 
um, we we do pray <clears throat> for others among us lord who found it hard in these difficult times lord but we thank you lord as we been reading that the lord of hosts is with us he never leaves us and he never forsakes us we thank you lord we can call upon him and so lord we give you praise this morning for these things we thank you for you're a wonderful god and worthy of all praise and glory and honor and we ask these things as we continue lord in your presence in that great and wonderful name of our dear saviour the lord jesus christ amen amen <laughs> together around the word of God isn't it in these difficult days with face masks and social distancing and all the other things that have been brought upon us but that's what we're coming to do that's why we're here to hear the word from the living God the one true God inspired for us written down for us the words of the Holy Spirit we meet in the name of Christ in the presence of Christ and we read the words of the Holy Spirit. Shall we 
turn our Bibles in our Bibles please to uh, Romans chapter 11 it'll be on the screen if you prefer to follow it on the screen and we're considering again the uh, message of Paul the Apostle as he wrote to the church in Rome 20 centuries ago his words preserved for us uh, brought to us the very words that he wrote on the page and of course his big question he's asking about the Jews his own people he was a Jew a Hebrew of the Hebrews a tribe of a member of the tribe of Benjamin a Pharisee of the Pharisees strictest of the strict he'd come to know Christ and he was burdened for his own people and these three chapters 9 10 and 11 are all about the Jews so that's our thoughts today I'm going to pray ask God to speak to us through his word and then I'll read it to you our Heavenly Father we thank you for the word of God the book of God and we pray Lord as we come into your presence that you might speak to us O Lord through your word by your spirit open our eyes to see the great things of God the wonderful person of the Lord Jesus Christ his great work in saving sinners and his work too in our lives Lord may we come to know you as we read your word and as we as we meet with you today in the name of Jesus Amen Amen I say then has God cast away his people certainly not for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew or do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah how he pleads with God against Israel saying Lord they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars and I alone am left and they seek my life but what does the divine response say to him I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so, then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if it is by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it is written, God has given to them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day and David says let their table become a snare and a trap a stumbling block and a recompense to them let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow down their back always I say then have they stumbled that they should fall certainly not but through their fall to provoke them to jealousy salvation has come to the Gentiles now if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles how much more their fullness for I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle to the Gentiles I magnify my ministry if by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are, are my, who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Now the Jews truly are an amazing people anyone who's studied the history of the Jews will is amazed by what has happened to them 
they are completely unique amongst earth's nations we have many nations represented in the church for which we really do praise the lord christianity is an international uh, expedition if you like it's an international thing the church of jesus christ all nations tongues peoples and tribes but the jews are different from every nation wherever you're from whoever you are the jews are different to you and me the rest of us who are gentiles i'm going to show you how they were ejected as slaves they were a slave people ejected from egypt in the 15th century bc they took possession amazingly and miraculously of the land now known as israel the history is 39 books in the old testament it is the old testament bible and of course it's been confirmed again and again by archaeological uh, archaeological discoveries particularly in the last two or three hundred years we've dug things up which have just confirmed what the bible has said all along it is important to remind the skeptic of that they were exiled when their city was destroyed in 586 bc by a man called nebuchadnezzar he burned their temple he wasted their people and he took them all captive no other nation has ever recovered from that what the jews did 70 years later god brought them back to their land they built their temple they repopulated the land they rebuilt their walls they lived again uh, in the time of nehemiah and ezra and the later prophets there was then 400 years of silence when god didn't speak through a prophet but then john the baptist stood up and uh, he said prepare the way of the lord and jesus came on john was the forerunner the last of the old testament prophets and jesus the son of god declared himself to israel they rejected him and he was crucified by their chief priests and uh, leading people by the romans but at the instigation of the chief priests and less than 40 years after the crucifixion their temple was again destroyed in ad 70 the roman legions burnt their temple to the ground plundered it and it's estimated almost a million of them were crucified outside the walls of Jerusalem where they had crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. They were then scattered amongst the nations but remained distinct. And yet in 1947, the Jews were back in their land. And in 1948, Israel was declared an independent state the hebrew language is the world's only example of a dead language that's now revived and spoken by nine million people isn't that amazing a dead language and yet now all over the world people speak hebrew other nations and civilizations you've heard of the aztecs they've been and they've gone you've heard of the incas they've been and they've gone the romans they've been and they've gone but the Jews have remained until this day truly a remarkable people they have a unique book their book is the Bible and of course we uh, build upon the new Old Testament with the New Testament given to us through Jewish apostles apostles were all Jewish men who've given to us the Word of God and of course it's important therefore to see what god has done is doing and will do for the jew that's our subject today you say well why is that what's that got to do with me i'll tell you what it's got to do with you the way in which god deals with these people is the way in which god deals with us when we look at the book of god we find out about god and therefore as we learn about him we learn how he deals with men and women's lives we learn big lessons for ourselves we learn lessons in this chapter about the greatness of god 
Have you ever wondered what happens to people who listen to the gospel and say no? This chapter gives us the answer. Have you ever wondered about people who once were here with us? Some of us have sons and daughters in that position, but now are far from God. Have they lost their salvation? This chapter gives us the answer to that question. Is God able and willing to bring back the rejecter again? And can I as a Christian, is it possible for me to lose my salvation? This chapter deals with these questions. So it's a question, it's a book, it's a chapter about the Jews, but it's also a chapter that's relevant to every Christian. We're going to look at this chapter over the next few weeks. Three points today. Um, why are we here? Well, simply because in, at this point, the apostle is asking the question, how is it that the Jews are not being saved? This is in his day and generation, but it's true today, by and large. But the Gentiles are being saved. Wherever Paul went, he preached the gospel. The Jews rejected him, threw him out of town, stoned him, treated him terribly. But the Gentiles, the non-Jews, all believed, or largely believed, and the first century church was largely Gentile. And so he comes to the point in his argument and he says, well, has God finished with them? Is that it for the Jew? Have they sinned so much that they can't be recovered? Has God cast away his ancient people? That's his question with which he starts verse 1. Has God cast away his people? And that's the title of our message. And of course, the big question is this. If he hasn't, what is he doing? What is God doing? And then another important application, you know, we live in strange days. Face masks in church and social distancing and all these issues. Good to ask the question, what's God doing in these days behind these situations and um, requirements that we find ourselves in? Good to ask that question, what is God doing? And it's an important question for us to reflect. When things happen in our life, maybe things we weren't expecting, what's God doing? What's God saying? That's Romans 11. And so, three parts to our message today. We're going to see that God's rejection of Israel was not total. That's the point he makes in verses 1 to 5. We're going to see, however, that God's rejection is not trivial. He really did reject the Jews who hardened their hearts. In fact, it goes further and say that God gave them a spirit of slumber. But we're going to see also, in, particularly in the later part of this reading and this chapter, God's rejection of Israel was not final. It's not a complete rejection. There is a future role for the Jew to play within the church of Jesus Christ, an important role. So there's our journey today. God's rejection, not total. God's rejection, not trivial. But God's rejection is not final. Well, we've already seen, haven't we, why Paul asked the question, has God cast away his people? Wherever he went and preached by and large, a few Jews were saved, mostly Gentiles, and he was treated very badly. How did he put up with it? Well, let's remember that he was once a Jewish persecutor. He was once someone who went into houses and dragged people out and put them in prison. He was once one who organized the persecution of Christians. He could understand the Jewish thinking. And how does he answer? Has God passed, cast away his people? He says, certainly not. That's a strong negative answer. And he proves that in two ways. How does he prove it? Well, the first one is he says, look at me, he says. I'm a Jew and I'm saved. God has not cast away his people. There's people like me within the Christian church. He points to his own experience 
of as a Christian. And he says this, God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Where do we meet that word before? And so we met it in Romans chapter 8 and verse 29, where we read that God foreknew people. He then foreordained that they would believe. He called them to himself at a point in time. And then he justified them. They became justified by faith as they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And eventually all those who God has foreknown will be in heaven, glorified. In fact, it's a past tense in Romans 8, 29. It's as good as done. If you're a Christian today, you are said not only to be justified, called uh, and foreknown, foreordained, you're already said to be glorified. That's how certain it really is. And Paul says amongst the Jews, there's people like that, and I'm one of those, foreknown by God. God has not cast away his people who he's foreknown. That's his argument in verse 2. But he gives another argument from the Old Testament, and the Apostle Paul often does this. He speaks from his experience. He then goes back to the Old Testament, and he uses an illustration. Who does he tell us about? Elijah. Remember him? The greatest, the first, and the greatest of the Jewish uh, order of prophets. Very important figure. And he says this. Do you remember Elijah? He pleaded with God against Israel. Uh, Lord, they've killed your prophets, torn down your altars. I'm the only one left. But of course, God said to him, Elijah, you're not the only one left. There's a remnant of 7,000 who've not bowed the knee to Baal and not kissed his mouth. So Paul says, has God cast away his people? No, there's people like me, uh, a remnant. But do you remember in the days of Elijah, he thought God had cast away Israel, but he hadn't. There were 7,000 who were not Baal worshippers, even though the large amount of them had gone astray at that point in time. They had torn down the altars. They had killed the prophets. God said to Elijah, no, you're not the only one. There's a remnant. And Paul says, God has not cast away his people. Even today when he's writing, there's people like me, and there's other Jews up and down in the Christian churches who have been saved. A few weeks ago, we had Florent Varac from Lyon to speak to us. Uh, Florent is, uh, he spoke to us on Romans chapter 2, a great message. He's Jewish, from Jewish uh, stock. Um, and uh, his Jewish name, of course, Varac. Barak, uh, the idea of being blessed there in his name. And he's making a tremendous contribution in the churches of Lyon. Two or three churches there founded, uh, planted through his gospel preaching church there. It is true that Jews within the Christian church have made a tremendous contribution down through the centuries. That's what Paul is saying here. He hasn't cast them away. There's individuals here and there who have been saved because God is working to an eternal plan. Now, that's an encouragement for us. I was listening this week about persecution in northern Nigeria and in the Cameroon. It really is terrible. We should pray much for our brothers and sisters there because the Muslim persecution, Boko Haram, against the Christians in northern Nigeria and the Cameroon is, is terrible, really. And of course, we should pray, not just for the survival of the church, but we should pray for the persecutors. Because the real answer is if these people get converted. That's what happened to the Apostle Paul. He was a persecutor who became a preacher. Wouldn't it be great if some of these wicked men who are killing Christians and villages um, would be saved? We ought to pray for that. And of course, that's what we can pray for, encouraged by this chapter. So there we are. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Do you know there's something as well we can encourage ourselves 
We look at Britain today, once a nation where many people would be in church on Sunday. Today, as we drove to church, all the cars uh, parked up for the football that's gonna take place in Thomas Lane. We're a nation in which churches have been turned into carpet storehouses and other things. We're a nation who once were a Christian, a gospel believing people. We're a nation who's turned our back upon the Lord, but we should not be discouraged. We're not the only ones left. God is still working to a plan. Elijah was wrong to be depressed and to be in despair and God put him out of it. And he said, you're not the only one. And these are days too of opportunity when we can go into the streets and preach the gospel. And we should do because God is at work. Not what it was, praise God, it's not what it could be. And let's pray for change and work in that direction. We don't live in Brazil where there are millions who've come to Christ or China where there are tens of millions or in Africa where the gospel is going powerfully in sub-Saharan Africa. Lots of people being saved or in South Korea. We don't live in those days in the UK but we ought not to despair. We ought to work while it's day and preach to all that we can. Who knows what God might do through us, his people in these days. That's the application of these verses. There's a remnant says, Paul in the Jewish community in his day, according to the election of grace, but you know, there was a rejection of a large part of the Jewish nation in those days. They did say crucify when Jesus was brought out. What shall we do with this man? Stake him, crucify him. They did say that. And they did pay a very heavy price for saying his blood be on us and on our children. God's rejection is not trivial. And did you notice who the subject is in this verse? God has given them a spirit of stupor. God has done this to them. Now here's a very, very delicate but important teaching in the scriptures. You see, in these verses, verse 7, there are two groups mentioned. Israel has not obtained what it seeks, seeking salvation by good works, but the elect have obtained it. The rest were blinded. You see the two groups? He speaks about an election of God. He speaks about the rest. And he does. And you can't understand this passage without coming to terms with the idea of election, that God is active in choosing some and not all that's what it says now don't mix, mistake me here we've already met this teaching in chapter 9 do you remember pharaoh god gave him every opportunity to repent he said no let my people go no showed him signs and wonders it says he hardened his heart and then god hardened his heart there was a judicial hardening and that's what it's speaking of here john the baptist came everybody heard of him thousands went to see him jesus came the dead were raised the lepers were healed the blind were cured the deaf the demons were cast out jesus walked amongst them and they hardened their heart most most of them and God gave them a spirit of stupor. What's the doctrine here? The doctrine is this. Whenever the gospel of Christ is preached, whenever Christ is set before people, there's not one reaction, but two. One is to accept him and trust him and follow him. And the word Jews who did that. The other reaction is to say no, to harden their heart, to say not yet, 
I'll become a Christian later. Is that you? I'll do it later for God. You cannot say that. Because you don't know at what point when a man or woman hardens his heart, God begins to harden the heart too. He doesn't cause anyone to sin. He doesn't want anyone to sin. But if people harden their hearts, there comes a point where God says, okay. And their hearts are hardened by the Lord himself. It's like a car on a hill. If you have a car on a hill it wants to go down that's us our fallen nature it wants to go down but the brakes are on and it's prevented but you take the brake off and the car goes down and there are some lives like that they want to go away from God but God is holding them back but they become so hard that God just takes the brake off and there they go do not harden your heart, my friend. That's what the Bible is teaching us in this very solemn section. All who hear God's voice preached through this message and through the Bible as it's read, there's two reactions every time. One is, no, not yet, or no. And the other is, yes, Lord, we respond to him. We need to pray that we'd have a sensitive and a tender and a responsive heart the opposite is a hard heart spirit of slumber a deep sleep blindness of heart can't see and hardness of heart those are the three images in this passage God's rejection was real for many of the Jews there was a remnant according to the election of grace but in Paul's day, the majority had said no. And they abide mainly through the centuries in unbelief. There has not yet been. Until this century, there's been large numbers of Jews who've been saved. But for 19 centuries, not many Jews in the church. Some, not many. Not many churches in Israel, and in fact, if you're a Christian converted from a Jewish background, you can expect hostility sometimes from your own family. That's the state. You see, God's rejection wasn't total, but it, neither was it trivial. But you know there's hope in this passage for the Jew. It's not final. It's always good to ask the question, what is God doing? Well, Paul Ask the question gives us the answer please I'm going to read with me read, please read with me verse um, 11 have they stumbled that they should fall certainly not but through their fall to provoke them to jealousy salvation has come to the Gentiles what was God doing do you remember the first persecution in the book of Acts that we read about? Stephen was stoned. Paul was there. And it said the believers were scattered everywhere. What did they do? They preached the gospel everywhere. They were all in Jerusalem, 5,000 of them. Persecution came and the gospel was spread all over Israel. And when Paul went to a place, he went to Antioch um, and, and Darbe and Lystra, he was thrown out. What did he do? He didn't just wait outside the wall he went to the next town and he preached the gospel there persecution the rejection of the jew meant that the gospel spread all over the empire so there were people everywhere who trusted christ and this was god's doing through their fall to provoke them to jealousy god salvation had come to all the gentiles and you know sometimes persecution results in the spread of the gospel paul ended up in jail a roman jail had a different soldier every day to guard him what did he talk to them about he didn't talk about the weather he didn't talk about the football he talked about jesus and the soldiers were converted and within a very short time there were soldiers in the palace 
of Nero who was saved. Isn't that amazing? From a prisoner, people in the top office of state in the most powerful empire in the world had been saved through Jesus Christ. Persecution had produced gospel success. That's what God did as the Jews rejected Christ. But he's not finished with the Jew yet. In verses 1 to 6, he's speaking about individuals. Is God finished with the Jew? No, I'm one of them. And there's some few here and there all over. But in the rest of the chapter, it doesn't finish there. He speaks about the nation again. And he asks two questions. Verse 12. If therefore, plural, nation, if their fall is riches for the world, their failure, riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Verse 15. If their being cast away, rejection, is the reconciling of the world through the preaching of the gospel, how much their acceptance? Fullness and... Sorry, acceptance and fullness. There is words talking about the nation not individuals and the point is this God's rejection is not total there was always one and two God's rejection is not trivial it is serious to be hardened by God but God's rejection is not final there's coming a day of acceptance and fullness for Israel that's what he mentions here and that's what he goes on to talk about for the rest of the chapter God is not yet finished with the Jew this remarkable people they will yet have a role to play within the church not as a separate entity we're not going to see sacrifices and candles and all that that's not coming back but within the church of Jesus Christ the Jew has a role to play salvation uh, for them to be included in the church and we should pray and we should work for that as individuals and as a church let's pray for God to do work amongst Israel in these days as I said in North America there's been large numbers of Jews who've come to faith in Christ there are a number of messianic congregations people who've come from a Jewish background who've been saved and we should pray for their impact upon the wider community three lessons to finish with today first one is encouragement do not despair it's not for us to be despairing as christians we should never be discouraged take it to the lord in prayer with god all things are possible let's not be discouraged about unbelievers in our family about difficulties that have come with God all things are possible there's an encouragement in these verses there's a warning in the verses don't harden your heart if you've heard the gospel and you've not yet believed it you're in a very dangerous position trust Christ don't say no to him and for those all of us we should pray that we might have tender hearts that listen to God's voice sensitive close to the shepherd following him day by day encouragement warning and the final thing there is a promise in these verses God will yet do great things through the nation of Israel Let's pray for it. Let's work for it. Let's support that. What did Jesus say? The Lord Jesus Christ said these words. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He is building his church and he will have the last word in this world shall we pray 
Thank you, Lord, for this chapter which speaks of your dealing with the Jew. But thank you, Lord, that what we can also learn lessons about how you deal with us also. May we be those who are encouraged and not discouraged by the situation that we see around us, knowing that you are working to a plan. Lord, might we be those who heed the warning of Scripture and might never harden our heart towards you, our God. And Lord, may you help us to believe the promises of Scripture, great things, as our Lord Jesus Christ builds his church. Help us, Lord, to be part of that by trusting him and by sharing his news, this great news of the gospel with others. We pray it in his name. Amen.